can be compared with you. No, not one on earth and even in heaven. That is why, Lord God, from eternity to eternity, and we will give you praise. For you are worthy of our praise. Jesus, we worship you. In the name of Jesus, take glory, Father, take glory, Son, take glory, Holy Ghost. Blessed be your name, be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshiped. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have worshiped. As somebody shout, Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you, choir. God bless you. Who we'll briefly hear the word of God? I believe that you will not go the same way. Let's wait for the The Lord with us. That, that's what Emmanuel means. God with us. Be thou exalted 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for the choir. Choir, well done. God bless you. Thank you very much. We have the privilege to have them. We thank God for their lives. And they even have in their midst uh, people from, what are they called? Um, people from Birmingham. What are they called? Promise. Yes, they have promise. They, they have important promise. Promise, you're welcome. Please visit more. Amen. We can start a fund for their train tickets. How many will pay to the fund? Now look at all these things, you people, as in Nero. Come on, can I check? Come on, let's find all the promise. Oh, no. Can we organize uh, even a helicopter? Can't we? We are more than enough in this church. Even Sister Vera is saying amen there.
for three days. Some of us try for three hours and you feel like you just can't get up. Hallelujah. Amen. You say drive to London and it's a big deal, you know. I remember one steward coming to me and saying, Auntie, you know, I'm going to drive Leon to where, where, and then I'm going to come back. And I say, so what? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get no sympathy. I said, so what? You're strong. Drive. Go and come back. But in my heart, I know it's a long journey. To drive 10 hours in one day is a long journey. And when we imagine that journey, you put off a lot of things, isn't it? But these people have no choice. They couldn't have an alternative transport. So they walked for three days. By the time you get home after three days of walking, you can imagine how tired you are. And physiologically, when you're tired, you get a bit close to depression, isn't it? Many times when you're tired, you're not going to be in a jovial mood. They get to sick life and they think, I'm just going to have a rest. Those who are married think, I'm just going to let my wife comfort me and strengthen me, and I'm just going to eat. And you know, if there were evil men amongst them, they would think of your lupo soup and all these kind of things. But when they got home, Ziklag had been burnt with fire. Not the fire that is just burning now. It's a fire that has been burning for three days. Nothing was left. When they got to Ziklag, there were ashes, and the ashes were still on fire. If you had any property you valued, it was gone. And they said their wives and their children, the dead bodies went there. They had been kidnapped. They could see the tracks of the feet. They'd gone. Imagine you come home, and some of these beautiful children we see here, they've disappeared. You came home after a long shift, thinking you were going to rest. I'm trying to paint the picture for us of how painful Ziklag was for David and his men. You are already tired physically, and then you get a psychological distress. It was a sucker punch. He should have finished them. But in the midst of that, the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Just like I'm asking you one more time. Use today as the day to encourage yourself over that prayer point that you've given up on. And pray like never before. Because this is the day when you are going to be comforted. This is a day of divine restoration. Are we in the first some? Okay, thank you. So we go to Ziklag. All the people have been carried off captive. Let's go forward. Let's keep going. Let's go to the next verses. Let's go forward. Yeah, okay. This is where I want us to go. David, in verse 8, inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this band of rangers? Will I overtake them? And God answered him the answer he's telling you this morning. Some of you haven't even asked. You've not bothered to pray that prayer point because you've given up on it. But I'm telling you this hour, bring it back up again and pray. And when we pray, God said to him, as he's saying to us this day, pursue, for you will certainly overtake, and you will certainly rescue the captives. You will bring everybody back. In other words, you shall be restored. The day of restoration is not next year. It's not in 10 years' time. It is today. The Bible says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Don't say, well, they've said this before. Never mind about before. Today is a new day. Today, when you hear his word, do not harden your heart. The choir sang that he is the extraordinary strategist. What sometimes we think is a problem is God setting you up so that you can have a mind-blowing encounter with his goodness. It's an extraordinary strategy. Your life is not a mistake. Even the things you think were a mistake were not a mistake. They are part of the strategy. Because your father neither sleeps nor slumbers. Every time we go through things that we think this is a problem, we are actually seeing it the wrong way. The extraordinary strategy has set you up to be that man, that woman, who will have a mind-blowing testimony. But many times we don't want to agree with it. 
and God is just waiting for you. You say, I'm waiting on the Lord. He's waiting on you. He's waiting for you to make up your mind that God, the extraordinary things you planned and purposed for me, I am ready to receive them today. The Bible says they get to see Clark. And remember, they are tired. They've already walked for three days. But now there's something that needs to be done. They can't just sit and do nothing. And they had to get up and go and chase after that family. They had to go and chase after their children. And then as they were going, the Bible records that the, the tiredness was so much. It was a laziness. When they got to verse 10, in fact, first nine, first nine, where's first nine? The Bible says, so David went, he and the 600 men who were with him, and they came to Brook Besor. There, those who could not continue remained behind. But David pursued the Amalekites, he and 400 men, for 200 were too exhausted to cross the brook. They were not lazy, they were exhausted. But look at it. There were 200 tired who said, I can't carry on. But the other 400, what happened to them? At the point of exhaustion, these 400 men, they received strength to go forward. What does the Bible say? Isaiah 40, verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the Lord, the everlasting God, he doesn't get tired. There is no searching of his understanding. Those who are getting faith, he gives might. He gives power to the weary. So how many of you today are willing to be a part of the 400? The other 200 have given up. They are tired. They can't carry on. But you say, no, I serve a God who is not tired. His name is El Shaddai, the double-breasted God who is more than enough to meet my needs. He is the strength of the nation. His name is El Olam, the everlasting God from everlasting to everlasting is the same. And he says, we are his sons and daughters. We carry his DNA by reason of the blood of Jesus. So if I have this kind of God, do I have any excuse to be tired? No, you can't be tired. You need to rise up and be part of the 400. The 400 rose up and said, no matter what, I'm going to just keep walking. Mary Mary sang a song once, and they said, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. They said, I'm just going to put one foot in front of another. I don't need to know what will happen 100 meters down the road. But what I know is this foot is not going to remain in one place. I'm going to just keep putting one foot in front of another. And before I know it, I have reached the promised land. You need to keep walking. You cannot sit down, and you cannot give up. You cannot give up the fight. Putting one foot in front of another for some of you is waking up. Just get out of bed. Get out of bed. And then when you're out of bed, God will know what to do. Keep putting another foot in front of another. Keep showing up. Show up to church. Show up to Bible study. Show up to prayer meeting. Keep putting one foot in front of another. And the one who is called the strength of Israel will catapult you to the finished product. When these 400 men Cross the brook of Besor. They did not know the outcome. We know. We're sitting here relaxed. We think it was easy because we were not there and we already know the end. Remember, these people did not know the end. They knew that the raiders raided three days ago. If somebody has got a three-day start ahead of you, what kind of hope do you have to catch up with them? How do you hope to catch up with them? But you see, our God is the God of divine speed. That's how I know that even the people you think have gone ahead of you, you are going to overtake and you're going to recover all. How will you catch up with people? You haven't got a plane. You haven't got anything. They didn't have a chance. They were walking and they were hoping to overtake people who raided three days ago. And you and I know that whoever raids will not just raid and sit down. They raid and move, isn't it? How does it happen? That these people who are tired could have the hope of catching up because they knew the God they served. How matter is, no matter how impossible the situation, our God is an extraordinary strategist. God of strategy. They get to the brook vessel, and you know what? They cross the brook. The brook vessel is the brook of cheerfulness. 
But so means cheerfulness. You come to Ziklag, you've done your pity party, you've cried, my wife's gone, my kids are gone, my dog's gone, my goat's gone. But you have to eventually cross the brook the soul, where you get your cheerfulness back. A lot of Christians, misery on their faces. You wonder, where is, where is the joy of salvation? Who would want to be born again when they see you? Are you a testimony of your God? You're going to have to cross the brook vessel. God knew that these people are bereft. In fact, they were suffering a serious bereavement. Suffering serious loss. Not just bereavement of human beings, but bereavement of everything they had worked for and gathered. Everything had gone. But they had to cross the brook of cheerfulness. That's why I want to see some smiles in this house. You're going to have to cross the brook of cheerfulness. Because Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. A person who has joy has already defeated the devil. There is nothing the devil can do about your case when you have crossed the brook of cheerfulness. When you say, in the midst of the storm, I'm going to laugh. In the midst of it all, I'm going to laugh. Because once you do that, you engage the forces of heaven on your behalf. Because we are those who walk by faith, not by sight. And there's only one currency you can use to speak to God in heaven. The currency of faith. Tears don't work really. He keeps a record of them, of course. The Bible says he has put my tears in a bottle. But it didn't say he then used my tears to answer my prayer. He will record the tears. But faith is the currency of heaven. When I'm going to be cheerful by the brook of the soul, I have actually told God that God, I know this sickness is not unto death. God, I know this is not going to be a problem for a long time. God, I know that you are good. That's why they said, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. You're not going to stop being faithful now. This diagnosis is not going to make you stop being faithful. This situation is not going to make God stop being faithful. All my life you have been faithful. That's why I'm going to cross the proof vessel with joy. And as soon as I, 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 I get in that book, I position myself for a testimony. Because God cannot resist that heart of cheerfulness, that heart of faith, that heart that honors him, that says, God, I know you're not a liar. Because if I sit and begin to cry endlessly, I am saying, God, all your promises are nay. But the choir said, all your promises are yay and amen in Christ Jesus. If I'm going to be miserable, I'm saying you're a liar. But God, I know that you cannot lie. You cannot deny yourself. What you say you will do, that is what you're going to do. So we're going to cross the brook of a song with John. Immediately they crossed the brook, they found an Egyptian who planted him there. The extraordinary strategist, the impossibility specialist, he planted an Egyptian. This Egyptian miraculously became ill three days before, so that the raging party couldn't carry him. They were trying to keep up, keep up, keep up slave, and he couldn't walk. And they said, this slave is going to get us killed. These people with rage and will soon catch us up, leave him to die on the road. They did not know it was a strategy. And the Egyptian boy must have cried and said, what kind of suffering is this? Is it not enough for the slave? Now they have left me on the road for these people to come and kill me. He even didn't know that God was using his sickness to deliver him from slavery. Because from that day, he became a valued part of David's army. Are you with me? God caused that guy to be sick for one reason, so that he can become their GPS. They are sat now in 200 yards, turn left. In 500 yards, turn right. The boy became their GPS. The strategist planted in there. He was planted on the day of the raid. So you see this. Before you even started crying, God knew you were going to cry and God already provided the way out of your tears. So what's the point of the crying? We can just do it a little bit, but get out of it. Because your God knew you were going to cry and you already planted the Egyptian. Whatever we needed to get out of this mess, God already presented it and prepared it in advance. They crossed the brook of cheerfulness. 
They left the negative emotions of Ziklag. Ziklag was a place of pain. The Bible says these were grown men, army, military people. It says they cried until they had no strength to cry. But they got to Bresson and they said, you know what, with Christ, it's enough. Now we are moving. We're moving ahead. And because they made up their minds to move, they obtained the miracle. Hallelujah. The Egyptian boy took them forward. Let's go, let's go. He, he, he took them, he took them, he took them. And then, and then, what happened in verse 16? He brought David down. The Amalekites had disbanded. Do you know? That the witches and the wizards, they can't be on ships all the time. One day they disband and say, we've done it. We've done it. That, that, that shrine says we've finished it. So they disbanded. They, 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 they broke the formation of the, of the army. They disbanded. And they spread all over the land, eating and drinking and dancing. How many know that God can gain, crush, and destroy the parties of your enemies? While they are rejoicing that it's finished, she's finished completely. She can't recover from this. They were dancing because of all the great spoil they were taking. But God ain't crashed the party. That's how I know that every satanic party, every satanic enjoyment somewhere, when they're enjoying at your expense, right now, the party's over. It is over. And I thank God because they've disbanded. Disbanding means they cannot go back together again. Whatever was the strategy has been disbanded. It's disbanded. They've lost their rankings and their findings. They're in a mess. They're confused. They don't know where to start. That's where the devil is at right now. He's been disbanded. And David and his men struck them down from twilight until the evening of the next day. Where did they get the strength from? People who've already walked for three days before, They've added another journey, and then on top of that journey, they fight for almost another two days. That's how I know you can't break down. Whatever kills other people can't kill you. Whatever destroys other people can't destroy you. You can't fail. When others have failed, you cannot fail. Because Isaiah 40, 29, he gives power to the faint and to the weary. To him who has no might, who says, but who am I? I've got no power. He says he increases strength. He causes your strength to multiply exponentially until people begin to say, is she really human? Is this person a human? Do they have the same blood I have? That is the God we serve. How could this man fight like this? Because they had the strength of Israel behind them. And the same God yesterday is the same God today. El Olam, the everlasting God, the unchangeable changer. He remains the same. If these men who were tired from walking, tired from crying, tired from grieving, could get this energy, you have more. You're not going to fail. You're not going to be overwhelmed in the name of Jesus. And you see, God's not going to come physically on earth to fight for you. They had to fight. Stand up and fight. They had to fight. God didn't say, oh, Michael, go around. David been tired, been walking for ages. Michael, go and kill them. No. They had to experience the miracle of this kind of uncommon strength. You need to rise up and fight so you can experience the miracle. God wants you to partner with him. But his partnership is good because he's supplying the strength. You are really like a puppet. People admire you, but they don't know that behind there's a master puppeteer moving in this way and the other. Hallelujah. And then finally, what happened? The Bible says, nothing of theirs was missing, whether small or great. Nothing. They recovered all. How many of you are content for the enemy to have something small from you and keep holding on to it? Even if it's small, he's got to bring it back. Even if he's stolen one hour of your sleep, you need it back. No matter how small, it, he said nothing was missing. Because our God is the great restorer. He said, comfort, comfort my people. The valleys are exalted. 
the mountains are level, the rough places are made smooth. I want us to rise on our feet like this man. It don't matter how tired you are or how bad things have been. I want you to rise up in that strength and begin to take back what the enemy stole from you. You're going to speak to the enemy. You're going to speak in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Chapter 10. How many of us are ready to take back, just like the message said, take back what the enemy has stolen? 
How many of us are ready? Listen, listen, let me tell you one thing. The little experience I've had in life have made me to understand that in this life, yeah, in this life, you must be ready to fight. I say it again. You must be ready to fight. Because there is somebody in this life that his business is to steal. His business is to steal from you. His business is to take your joy. His business is to take what belongs to you. So you must be ready to fight to make sure if he's there like he did in the case of David, steal your thing. You must be ready to fight to get it back. Tell your neighbor, say, no giving up. How do I know? You pray, Lord, bless me with children. Children, come. You have to pray to keep them out of drugs. Because around their environment and school is drug everywhere. Like water. You have to pray, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, my son will not see drugs. My daughter will not see drugs. If you don't pray, if you don't pray, that's why I understand. You pray for them. And when it comes to get married, Lord, 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 my son, pray. My son will be the right person. My daughter will be the right person. Because you know that if they be the wrong person, their life is finished. And when there are many right person, you pray, say, Father, may they be blessed. May they not lack anything. So in this life, you keep moving, ready to fight. When the devil comes stealing, you're ready to fight. Look at what the scripture says, in case you don't know. In, my, in, in, in Matthew 11, verse 2, it said, And from the day of John the Baptist until now, did he say that bad? He said, Until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered a violent, and it's only the violent that take their by force. Because he will come. The devil will come to steal that belongs to you. But do you know what? Do you know what? Why at times God allowed that? So that the lion in you can wake up and teach the devil some lessons of his life. No wonder the Bible said in Ephesians, it said that the church will teach the devil the manifold wisdom of God. How can we teach the devil the manifold wisdom of God if he doesn't come around trying you and then you rise up and show him that you serve Jehovah God? And it's mighty and awesome. So are we ready? Are we ready to take over? If you have a neighbor, he is your relative, as in you came from the same house. I want you to hold them. If you don't, don't worry. I want us, I want whatever the enemy has stolen. Listen, listen. Whatever the enemy has stolen, David was tired and down that he kept more than. I want to challenge somebody in this place that you are going to recover in the name of Jesus what the enemy has stolen from you. Say, Father, say, Father, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever the enemy has taken from us, ah, he's restoring now. I am taking it back by fire. I want you to go ahead and pray. Yeah, pray for that, your brother. Pray for that your sister you came from the same house with her. Whoever the enemy has stolen, we are taking it back today. In the name of Jesus, the life he has taken from you, the life he has stolen from you, we seek restoration in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You see that person you're holding? You are going to pray for them. You are going to pray for them. And your prayer will be, every plan of the devil concerning this one, every evil trap, every evil pit, every evil arrow that the enemy has planned for this one, Jehovah today, let them return back to center. That plan will not prosper. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Later, pray for that man, pray for that woman, pray for that child, pray for that person you're holding, pray for them. In company, plans of the devil concerning this world will not prosper. Every evil beat concerning this world will not prosper. Every trap concerning this world will not prosper. Every arrow and 
online as we have declared in the place of prayer so is unto you as well because the bible has made me to understand that the realm of the spirit has no distance to those of you watching from the zoom from online all that the people here are experiencing you will have your own restoration in the name of jesus hallelujah thank you lord those of you who are paying their time of friends, Father, in the name of Jesus, pray, oh God, as your children are faithful in their tithes and their offerings, we ask that you bless them in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, they will not lack money. They will always have more than they know about all things in the name of Jesus. Devour us as we put concerning this world. Sickness will be far away concerning this one in the name of Jesus Christ. You said in your word that you would remove devourers. And Lord God, as your children are faithful in their giving and their tithes, 
any form of devourer in the name of sickness, disease, stealing, the devil coming to steal from them. Today, there is a restoration in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's fine. Amen. Hallelujah. Just before we share the grace, uh, we want to appreciate everyone of us here. I see Grandma, Grandma Bosari. Amen. How many years now? When Grandma visited us last, sister for me, eight years ago. Yeah, Daniela was like this. Put your hands together for her. God bless you. God bless you, Mommy. Mommy, can you stand up? Let's see you. Amen. Grandma was here when Daniela was a baby. She carried Daniela. Is it Debbie? Okay, Debbie. It's good to see you, Grandma. God bless you. And we thank God for gifts of life for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And also, there's somebody in our face that we want to, to appreciate. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together for our dear children? God bless you. Hallelujah. 